So today I'm gonna show you guys 18 tips I wish I knew when I started using Adobe Audition. Now these tips aren't that deep. They're mostly for beginners, but if you're an expert, you can still follow along if you want to. You might learn something, who knows? But uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you do, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Let's go ahead and get into tip number one. I never used Adobe's Auto-Tune for about four years. I didn't even know there was Auto-Tune or pitch correction in Adobe. It never caught my attention because it says automatic pitch correction. It doesn't really say like Auto-Tune, but I just wanna say that Adobe has some of the best, most organic Auto-Tune there is. Mind you, there's not many settings. You got your scale, you got your key, you got attack, and you got sensitivity, but it works really well. If you guys want a natural pitch and you don't wanna make it sound like Auto-Tune, Keep it around 100, the sensitivity, and keep the attack at 2. That will give you like a normal, it doesn't sound too auto-tune-y. It sounds like you're trying to sing. But if you crank the attack and sensitivity, this will give you that T-Pain auto-tune effect. It's super basic, but this auto-tune pitch correction works really good. And uh, I just want to throw that out there. Till this day, 8 years later, this is still my favorite auto-tune plugin. And I've used several of other auto-tune plugins. Now number 2. They have one of the best compressors I've ever used. It's a stock preset, stock plugin, stock effect. The classic soft knee, dynamics processing. If you go to your effects, go down to uh, dynamics processing, you'll see it. Classic soft knee. One of the best compressors. I use it for every single one of my songs. Love it. Number three, I'm going to go through some shortcuts. If you hit shift and space, you can record. So you don't gotta go use your mouse, go down to record and click record. If you hit control Z, that's undo. Now control Z, you can undo anything. Like if you're on YouTube and you type something in wrong, you can hit control Z and it'll undo that. So control Z is like universal. When you make a course for your music, you don't have to record the course three different times. You can record the course one time, highlight your clips, control G, that will group your clips, control C to copy, and then you can go over to the other part of the beat where the chorus is, control V, and that will paste it, and boom, you have your chorus on the other side. Next, these yellow and white lines, because I've had people ask me about those before. Now, this yellow line controls the volume of your clip. So if you bring this up, is this going to bring the volume up? You can also click in there, add little points, and move it up. So you can like slowly fade it up if you want to. Then this white line is for panning your vocal. If you move it down, it's going to go to the right speaker. If you move it up, it's going to go to the left speaker. So sometimes like your workspace will get messed up and you might like lose your effect rack or you might lose your files. Your record thing starts going missing. You can't see the time or like you can't see your favorites. <laughs> and somehow your, con your workspace gets all messed up. Well, if you go to Window, Workspace, you can go to Reset Classic and then Reset Your Workspace. That's how you reset your workspace. Adobe has some awesome uh, noise reduction. So if you guys have hissing in your music, they have some awesome restoration effects, like noise reduction. This will get rid of any like white noise, some hissing in the background. Click Remover, so if you like go like that or something in the background, this will get rid of any like clicks, stuff like that. We're gonna talk about the appearance. So you can go down to preferences and go to your appearance and you can change the appearance of your uh, Adobe. The theme. So if you guys know the tempo of the song, I have no clue what the tempo of this beat is, but if you do know the tempo, you can set the tempo and it'll put a metronome in the background and it'll help you stay on beat. So that's pretty cool. And then you got this little clock right here. Now this little clock right here, this will stretch your vocals. So say you're trying to like sing a long note and you didn't sing it long enough, or say you sang it too long, like in my case right here, you can either stretch your clip or you can shorten it. So in this case, I shortened it. So you can see it's at 66%. It was at 100%. Uh, 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 uh. I didn't like that. I felt like it was too long, so I brought it down to 66%. 
So that helps you stretch your vocals. And then next to the clock, we have a magnet. Now you wanna keep this like on the whole time. Now say you copy and paste the chorus. If you don't use the magnet, it's gonna be a lot harder to line that up underneath. But if you use the magnet, it just like locks right in. Now this is another equalizer by Adobe. So if you go to uh, filter and EQ, you'll see 10 band, 20 band, 30 bands. <laughs> this is a 30 band EQ. The reason I like using this is because it's more precise. First off, you have every single like frequency. And second is that it goes above 20K. When I bring these knobs over here all the way to the right up, this kind of puts like air in my vocal. And when I bring these up, I usually only bring like the first two up. The only reason I brought the one up is because I recorded this on a $40 USB microphone. So like the microphone's not the best. So when you start bringing up those high frequencies, it starts to get a little harsh. This will put like air saturation in your vocals and it sounds really nice. It gives you like a breathy up front nice vocal sizzly vocal all right number 10 i'm gonna go through these buttons up here so if you want to access your effects quickly on the side you can click effects up here now these arrows this is your input this will give you your mic your master your bus tracks then we have our send it says sends our sends button here. This will enable you to like add a bus track. So say you didn't want to add effects here on the side. Like if you look on each and every single one of these tracks, I have effects on the side. Well, you can add a bus track, like add bus, add effects to the bus track, and then link all these tracks to the one bus track instead of adding effects to each track on the side. If you start adding a bunch of presets to each and every single track, your computer's eventually going to start lagging and slowing down. And then we have your levels right here, this little level image, and this shows your EQ. So instead of going to your mixer, you can see your EQ right on the side right here. Your clip effects. So you have your effect racks. And then if you go to clip effects, there's nothing there right now. But say I wanted to add more auto-tune on this track right here because I didn't sing it properly. Or I wanted more reverb on the end. So you can click anywhere in here. Then go to your clip effects. And then add whatever effect you want. Like say I wanted more auto-tune on that part. And more reverb. So now only this clip over here has more reverb. So if you want to add effects to one single clip, you can do that. Next, I want to mention this little fader. You should always use this fader. So I never, I didn't used to use these faders at all. Like my tracks would just look like this, no fade. Now each and every single one of my tracks, I fade in the right and the left, the start and the ending. You don't really want your vocal to end like abruptly. And also like say you're recording and you have breaths, you can go up to your eraser cut in between click it hit delete and then fade that and then fade that and you cut your breath out also this is pretty simple track two track four track five now if you click that you can change the name of the track so this is my hook this is my bridge and this is like my verses Now beside your volume, you have this level right here. Now you'll see an R if I go right, and you'll see a L if I go left. Now that's bringing your vocal to the right, and that's bringing your vocal to the left. Now usually when I use this, I'll use it for background vocals. I record my main vocal right here, and then say I want to do a vocal underneath it. I pan this one to the left, then I do another one underneath this one, and I pan this one to the right, and then you have one in the middle, one to the left, and one to the right. All right, now I'm going to go over an awesome little plugin that I never used for a long time until like earlier last year. This Adobe Mastering plugin. So if you go to your master track down here, this master track is controlling everything. So if I raise the volume of this master track, it's going to 
raise the volume of the beat. It's going to raise the volume of the vocals, the ad libs, everything that's in the session. If I put an EQ on this master track, and I cut the lows off. It's gonna cut the lows off to everything in the session, including the beat, everything. So this master track controls everything. Now, what I like doing is putting this mastering plugin on this master track. If you go down to your master track on the side and click this arrow and go down to special and go down to mastering, you got this Adobe stock mastering plugin effect and you have some settings here. Now I don't use the reverb. I usually only use reverb on vocals. Besides reverb, you got an exciter, which is like saturation. So it gives you like this sizzly sound to your song, like a shh. Uh, and then you have a widener, which is gonna like pan the song, make everything nice and wide. Then you have your loudness maximizer and your output gain, which is gonna like make your song louder, hit more harder. And then you have an EQ. So I like using this a lot when I master my songs. Don't forget to throw that on there. And I also like using it on my vocals. By the way, you'll see these are all Adobe stock effects. So my 30 bands, auto-tune, my compressor, FFT filter, a higher limiter. And I got two mastering things here, which I'm pretty much using the saturation and the widener and a little bit of EQ. And I got two of these. I got a tape saturation and then I got a tube saturation. And I'm bringing down the highs around 4K on the EQ. This will get rid of any uh, like nasaliness in my vocals. Then I have this little chorus effect on here. And then we have some reverb, another reverb, a studio reverb, and some echo. And then forget about this. That was not meant to be there. Yeah, those are all stock effects. So, you know, if you just pause the video, you got that whole preset. And Adobe has some awesome stock effects. I'm telling you that right now. All right, so adding plugins. So say you don't want to use their stock effects and you want to add some like auto-tune here, some UAD auto-tune. You got Adobe, now you want to go to waves.com and you want to buy some plugins. If you go to effects and go to audio plugin manager and then click scan for plugins, it will scan for the plugins after you download them and then click OK and then go down to VSTs and you should have your plugins. Pretty simple. Now, to be honest, this video was finished, but I thought of one more awesome little tip. So when you write a song to your beat and you have the beat in your session like this, you can color the clips so it makes it easier for you to organize the beat and you know where the hook is and the verses are. So the blue part is my hook and the green part is my verses. If you right click it and go to clip and group color, you can uh, change the color right there. But if you go to your razor, cut, cut, cut a little portion of it out and right click it and go there and pick a color and there you go now when I'm writing my song this makes it a lot easier because I know where my chorus is and I know where my verses are even when you're recording as well you know where your verses are and you know where your chorus is I just gotta write one more verse and then we're done but coloring the clips just makes it easier for you to like write the song and organize everything so that's pretty much it I hope you guys enjoyed this video I hope it helped you out a little bit just just a little bit I hope you took something from it and if you didn't, I still hope you enjoyed this video. I'm losing my hood here. Subscribe if you're not subscribed. If you guys want to see some more awesome little videos like this, drop a comment. Let me know what you want to see. I'll see you guys soon with another awesome a video like this. Like this, like.